the year 207180. That future is now. Driven out of their terrestrial Eden, humanity chose the stars as the final frontier. With the section by section collapse of the former nations, a mixed jumble of races and peoples came. They spread to the stars, taking with them the now confused concepts of freedom, violence, illegality, and love, where new rules and a new generation of outlaws came to being. People refer to them as Cowboy Bebops. I think it's time to blow this scene, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. And today I'm here to talk to you about Cowboy Bebop. Why Cowboy Bebop? If you have to ask that question, you have not even lived. I am telling you, this is one of the best shows out there. I, I mean, seriously, I'm talking a masterpiece, baby. Okay, so let's get some, uh, you know, but let's get bare facts out of the way, uh, you know, before we get going with the real good stuff. Uh, so the, the show was written by uh, Keiko Novomoto and was directed by Sinchiro Watanabe. And, um, you know, I you notice I list uh, both writer and director because you, know, you gotta have somebody to write this stuff down. The director really only directs uh, animation, although you know they, they do work in tandem. Um, so what is Cowboy Bebop? It is a uh, it, it's it's closer to the space opera genre, like um, like what Leiji Mashimoto did with like uh, it's kind of like Captain Harlock, um, only a bit more like cyberpunkish, and the whole cast is totally cool and it's it, it definitely harkens back to Leiji Matsumoto and it, it, it's basically like that's basically like saying uh, Miyazaki harkens back to, to Chizuka I mean like you know that that's just like a fact of life <laughs> you know because Leiji Matsumoto and Chizuka as I stated in episode one of the blog were like the founding fathers of the manga and anime as in if manga and anime as an industry um yeah, and you can certainly, I mean, like, uh, well, I can do it for this blog, but I'm pretty certain that if I went and looked back, you could, you know, anybody who goes back and looks at Leiji Matsumoto's work and uh, Kikun Moto's work side by side will see similarities. Um, because that's just, like, one of the cool things, though. And uh, another cool thing that is uh, almost unique to Cowboy Bebop is that it's not so much, I mean, it's not just an anime, you know, although it's, like, is a very cool anime, but one of the reasons it's very cool is because it has a lot of existentialist themes. And that's just like one of the themes. It has like a bazillion themes. It's like peeling back an onion, you know? And so like if you guys have like a philosophy class, you could like write a paper on this, on like existentialism. The ideas of that is with like jazz, it deals with blues, it deals with loneliness, the vast emptiness of space, uh, you know, among like several other themes I can't even like list off the top of my head. That's how cool this is. So like one of the very interesting things Nobomoto did for the series, and that's not really done with almost any other series, uh, yet not really so much, is that like he wanted a, f a full immersion effect, and what that really meant was that there's no backstory. I mean, like you start watching the show, and we wonder if it was for you to just be like thrown into this world, and you don't really get like a backstory on most of these people uh, until like much later. Or I mean, like in the beginning, yeah, you pick up some characters, but you don't really get like backstories on the two starting characters. Uh, Spike and Jet until like later in the show you know and even then it's only by circumstance you know so it's not like 
And it's, it's through circumstances, through memory, and through a lot of interpretation. And so really, like, you're just gonna have to go with the, th go with the flow when you watch this, because, I mean, um, yeah, you're just supposed to, you know, be sitting there and, like, watching it. You know, and just just being, like, open to anything that comes across your path. And, uh, yeah, that, that's just, that's what, that's what makes it so cool. Because, I mean, like, I know a lot of people who really can't watch it because of that, but it's like, you're missing out. You really are missing out if you haven't watched this, I am telling you. That's right, the story. I'm supposed to tell you guys a story. Uh, the story really starts, though, in, uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, because Cowboy Bebop was one of those shows that actually helped open the gate uh, to, like, the flood of anime we started getting uh, toward, yeah, started getting in later years. Uh, you know, like, up until, like, now. Uh, but anyway, Cowboy Bebop was one of those shows that really helped open the gate because a lot of, uh, because it came out a little bit later than, like, say, Pokemon, which is what I was really into at the time that this was, uh, that this show was airing. Uh, so you can't watch it in this, so it was actually a lot more, what you got more were, like, high school kids and college kids watching it. And like I said, college kids, high school and college kids, uh, were and still are the biggest market for anime out there. Um, because, uh, you like, kids like me, who were watching Pokemon, uh, at the time, uh, Pokemon is the other show that really helped open the gate, uh, so kids who watch Pokemon are now grown up, like I am, and are, you know, watching more mature things, like, uh, Cowboy Bebop, <laughs> getting into that. Um, but yeah, no, so, uh, the kids that are watching Cowboy Bebop already helped, uh, open the market, but, um, the story, that's right, the story, <laughs> I'm all over the place today, uh, yeah, no, so the story I have starts in 2001, uh, yes, 2000, it was 2000 or 2001. It sh it, I think it was 2000. Yeah, no, it was 2000. Because I was going to see Pokemon 2000. And Cowboy Bebop had a movie that came out in 2001. That's right. But anyways, I was sitting in the theater with my friend. We were waiting for Pokemon 2000 to come out, watching the trailers. And it was just after the Digimon trailer, actually. And I really hate those bastards. I mean, seriously, that's like a blatant copyright violation. Almost blatant. Well, it's damn close. <laughs> Yeah, it's damn close. Uh, but anyway, so I, I heard this kid, he's like, I can't wait for the Cowboy Bebop movie to come out and turn my friend right. Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know what that is. Um, you know, we're just here to watch Pokemon. The only other two anime shows I knew about uh, during the late 90s and early, you know, and turn of the, yeah, turn of the century were, yeah, the only two anime shows I knew about turn of the century were uh, Dragon Ball Z, which came out before Pokemon, and Cardcaptor Sakura, which came out after Pokemon. And we knew that because we were only ever watching Pokemon. And then after that, it was like playing The Sims or playing Pokemon. Or playing my friend's uh, SNES shit, Super Mario Brothers. On like actual SNES, and that was fun. Um, it shows like Donkey Kong Country 64. That was, Donkey Kong 64 is also a really good game. Enough of the games, though, about uh, anime. You know, so, I mean, I looked back on that when I got this show, and I'm like, that kid's parents were letting him watch this? I mean, that kid was like eight. We were like, you know, eight and 12 year olds sitting in that audience. I mean, seriously, you watch the show uh, and really, if you haven't, you're you missing a great deal, uh, you know, of this world. Not just like the anime world, of like the world itself, the entire globe. You're like missing a huge chunk of awesome that is that is in the world. Uh, but anyway, I mean, like, where were this kid's parents, you know? I mean, not saying that I lived, you know, in like, <laughs> like the, and I guess I lived in the greatest town. It was an alright town, though. I mean, it wasn't like, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like uh, the wrong side of the tracks, but, um, <laughs> still, I mean, where were this kid's parents? Obviously nowhere if they let him watch Cowboy Bebop. That show is... <laughs> it's an early show, I'm telling you. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's an early show, but it is a great show, and it's a, it's a cult classic that rose to the title of Masterpiece. It is now widely considered one of the masterpieces of anime. Uh, it's, like, right up there beside, uh, beside, like, what Ghibli Studio produces. Uh, or has produced, rather, since it's, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a, you know, and uh, it's obviously over. Um, visually enough, there's no particularly overarching plot, which is, um, which really actually does harken back to the real old style of anime, which didn't really, which also didn't really have, like, an overarching plot, um, because it was supposed to be more serial, uh, like comics and cartoons in, uh, in Western media. Uh, again, most of this, this covered in episode one, but it was gonna keep being covered and covered again, because it's so relevant. Um, 
But yeah, so this is the Griffin 88, and I'll be doing another almost live show at Comic Con uh, in about, ooh, like two days. <laughs> so, um, yeah, see you then. It's a man, baby!